In today's video we're going to make some recycled paper briquettes for burning in the wood burner. So today I'm going to have a bit of a break from selling online. Uh, there's only so much at looking at a computer screen you can do. And uh, I'm going to make some paper and sawdust briquettes for the winter. It's lovely sunny days, perfect time to dry them out. So, uh, yeah, just thought I'd show you my process of making them and uh, and sort of what's the best sort of practices to do, really. So, uh, hope you enjoy the video. Right, so here's what we're going to be making today. So, some of the things you'll need. The key thing. One of these screws I've got battered shoes on today. Don't want to be wearing good clothes for stuff like this. So this is a um, paper briquette press. Yeah. Um, I've had this for years and years and years. I actually bought it at the car boot sale for um, two pound, one pound fifty. Comes in, comes in pieces. And this is sat outside for many years, so you can see it's a bit rusty. I could do with getting another one, which I might, and I will drop a link in the um, doobly-doo to where you can find them. About 20 quid, I think they are. So yeah, the basic, it's just basic press. Put the stuff in there, squish it down, and um, yeah, there you go. Other things you'll need, you'll need to drill. Mixing paddle, you can pick these up from Screw Fix for, you know, I think about fiver maybe. Um, optional extras is a little mini crowbar uh, for taking this apart, this kind of gets a bit stuck, and a trowel. And then some buckets, these are a couple of pounds from B&Q, so I've got a few of them, got another one up there. And then obviously your paper, and then Got a bag of sawdust here. So yeah, bag of sawdust there. This sawdust is um, from a friend, and this is um, pine sawdust. Perfectly fine to burn. Just be careful using things like MDF sawdust because obviously you don't want to be breathing that in. It is a carcinogenic, and also it's probably not the best to be burning. Um, so I tend to stick to softwood or hardwood sawdust when doing these. So let's get cracking. So the, the first thing you want to be doing is you want to select the right kinds of uh, stuff to be putting in there. Um, I tend to use, this is like void fill from Amazon packages. I do reuse this in my online business. Um, the other things I use, cardboard, things like this. And also some, you know, cardboard, stuff like this. This is printed stuff, so I don't use this as much. Uh, because I don't know sort of what's in the inks, but the odd little bit's fine. The stuff I don't use is things like this, this really heavy sort of like, it's got clay in, it's very shiny stuff. Don't use that at all. Um, but mostly I use paper, before I started filming this, in this one, that is a tax return of mine, an old tax return which went through the shredder. You can see bits of it here. Um, older seats, stuff like that, all in there. So what I do first off is, it's like, like a three stage process, I've just finished doing a load. So there's an empty bucket there. First bucket, I'll tear the stuff up, it's left to soak for several days a week. As long as you can leave it, the better, obviously you don't want it rotting. Put it in there, let it soak down. You can see there there's um, all bits of you know stuff in there, it's quite thick, some thicker bits. And then so leave that there in a while, and then after a while it gets to sort of this stage where you still you can see there payment to and bits of my tax return, thicker chunks, and uh, I'm wearing gloves for this because I I don't know what sort of inks and things like that are in here, but there are bigger pieces. Uh, you can see here that's a uh, proof of postage for a tax return. So all I do is I just rip it into bits. You know you can put bigger chunks in. Rip it into pieces, 
stick it in the water, add a bit of water. Now you want to be careful when you're doing this, you know, don't overuse water, you don't want it too wet, but you know, you just need that nice porridge-like consistency. This is this one's probably a bit too wet, if anything. Um, so rip it up. You can use a shredder if you want, but you're probably wasting your time. With paper I do, because it, otherwise they get glued together like this and make like paper mache, so it's you can rip it up afterwards, but this does this does work well. Um, I'm going to make one that's got sharpened edges to hopefully chop it up a bit more. So yeah, just rip it up, dunk it in there, and then leave that to soak. Now with this one here, obviously there are some thicker bits in it. But there's also, like here, I didn't remove a piece of tape. So I need to ferret that out. Uh, you need to remove any tape because obviously that doesn't break down and you don't want to be burning tape really um, so the next step is, is to once that's all been soaking a while is you fit this in here and then corded drills better because you get more torque but this will do And make sure the battery's charged as well. <laughs> Fresh battery. Right. Schoolboy error there. It's because I've been doing some this morning. So you want to be see there's another piece there, it's quite big, but that has actually got tape on it as well, so taking that out. And try that again. Any bigger bits, I normally take out and leave it into this part of a book that had fallen apart. Books aren't always the best because they do contain a lot of clay in them. Newspapers are perfect for this. We don't get newspapers so uh, it's uh, kind of redundant. Again, there's some bigger bits. Bigger bits aren't particularly an issue, you can have bigger bits in there. Um, but yeah, this is getting to be right, about the right consistency. Again, I've left a piece of tape. I know it's not, it's just a large piece. So some of these thicker bits from cardboard are an issue. But yeah. So, so once you're happy with the consistency, yeah, you can see it's kind of like porridge. This is probably a little bit too much water in it. But that's probably the consistency you want. See here, it's uh, that's where you can squidge it, and it just keeps its form together. Essentially what we're doing is pressing it and uh, making a block like this which then will dry in the sun and create briquettes. So let's get on to the fun part. Now you can make the briquettes just like from this um, which I will show you uh, just a solely paper one but I do add sawdust but I will show you that afterwards. So I'll take a nice big scoop. You can do do this with your hands. Drill out of the way. And you just wanted to fill the mould. There's nothing particularly fancy about this. And as I said, it doesn't matter if there's bigger bits in there. I am going to be investing in a different machine for this uh, at some point, whether a new one of these or a slightly more industrial one. Because um, we burn these in conjunction with um, softwood and hardwood offcuts, um, so yeah, they they do smolder. Then you know, 
you wouldn't just burn these so there you go so then you can see that this is just a painter a painting tray which I find best for this sort of thing so make sure you line it up and then what I like to do is I get a block here and then just press it down and put all my weight on it and with these moulds they do bend and buckle a bit so you have to watch out and then just tip, tip it out I like to reuse this water because you, you know obviously there's going to be chemicals and all sorts in it so that's why I wear gloves um, then move this now tip this water into here reuse as much as possible and then once you've got the most stuff then you um, I like to just And it should ground out between there and there. Tip it out, it's almost there. One last push, and you can see it does bulge up the sides here and here. And then you can see it does like to pop out the bottom as well. That'll do. You can take this out, scoop more in, and make a thicker brick, but I like to do thinner, thinner bricks. So then all I do is just pop this out like so. You can see the uh get there. Put this excess water. This is where this comes in handy because uh, I don't know whether it's just because it's a old, bit old and rusty. But loosen it up like so, it pops out. And, uh, you just pull it out like so. This is a bit of a wet one this one but it'll do so and I just like to squidge the edges over it's like a big block of paper mache basically um, like that. squid these edges down and then you can tip it onto a board And there we go. Squidge the obvious bits in. And then I put them on the board. That one is quite a wet one. Very much a big difference between the sawdust ones and these ones. You can see us can squidge them. Um, so yeah, and that's basically it. So I'll just show you one with the sawdust. As you can see here, it's all squidged up the side of the mould. Because uh, there's a lot of pressure involved, really. So I do like to squidge the mould together a little bit. Where's my sawdust? All I like to do is add some sawdust. And the exact ratios you can mess about with is just plywood in that. That's not good. Um, and then you can either use the mixer or you can just do it by hand like this obviously you want to be taking you can see there it's pine take out any big bits I mean they can go into the mix it doesn't matter as long as there aren't huge pieces and then just give it a mix so I like to just do this provisional mix like this it's quite a big bit of pine there Another reason why to wear gloves to avoid splinters. Mm -hmm. 
So yeah, that's it really. You just keep adding sawdust until you're happy happy with how it looks. Um, You can immediately see the difference there between the two. This is a much drier, probably a bit too dry if anything, mix. I like to leave the sawdust in soak a little bit, but I'm in a bit of a rush today, so um, you can see a bit breaky there, but probably a bit more paper needed in there. So uh, yeah, I'll get a bunch of these made and let's see what we can do.